Good afternoon, everybody. It's Tuesday, May 26th, and today's video is the third video in a series that I'm putting together on how to optimize the fertilizing of your fig trees. The first two videos were about how to fertilize your fig trees, both in the early season when they're first breaking dormancy and in the mid season. And I will link to a playlist above where I'm compiling all of those videos on optimizing the fertilizing. But this third video is one of the most critical because I have found that following this method can dramatically increase your fig production and your overall yields for harvest. But timing this method is very important because you want to switch over to this method of fertilizing your fig trees at a very specific time. And that timing is when you start to see the very first figlet form on your fig tree. This right here is a figlet. It is forming in between the leaf node and the stem of the fig tree. And you know when the tree first forms its very first figlet, it's starting to transition from the growth phase to the fruiting phase. It's at that point that you can start switching your fertilizing over to a more aggressive fruiting formula. And it's important to note that when your fig trees start to transition into this phase, it's going to vary based on the climate that you're in. If I had to ballpark it, your fig trees will start putting out their first couple of figlets usually about 60 days after they break dormancy. However, like I said, that will vary based on how many hours of daylight you're getting, how cloudy your climate is, and what your average temperature is. Different varieties of fig trees will enter fruiting phases at different times. Some figs are just earlier than others. Here you can see this fig tree entered the phase much earlier than the one I showed as an example. Well, this variety right here hasn't formed any figlets on the tree at all. It's just starting to form double bumps at the node. And the double bumps, one bump will represent a new branch and another bump represents a new fig. So this is a later season variety that is just entering the fruiting phase and is behind many of my other varieties. But it's generally safe to say that when the majority of your fig trees start showing some type of figlet formation, be it double bump or little tiny figs like this, it is now safe to transition over to this step for the fertilizing process. In this video, I will be using a number of fertilizer products on my trees. If you're curious which products I use or where I get them, all of them are linked in my Amazon on storefront in the video description. In my previous videos, I've been very detailed with my overview on how to fertilize your trees. And I don't wanna to go too far into detail on this because my other videos do, but I would like to provide a quick overview nonetheless. On all fertilizers, you will see three numbers separated by two dashes, or you will see three numbers with percent signs after them. And they are the NPK ratios. N stands for nitrogen, P stands for phosphorus and K stands for potassium. And when it comes to how any plant grows, generally speaking, nitrogen is responsible for the overall growth in the leaves and greenery, so the stems and the wood of the tree. Phosphorus is overall responsible for the development of roots and fruits, whereas potassium is responsible for the overall health of the plant. Potassium is a precursor in cellular metabolism, so potassium contributes to the overall health and vigor of the plant by providing healthy cellular division. When it comes to what plants need, we all know they need sunlight, air, water, and food. Sunlight, air, and water is always provided by Mother Nature, but food is not necessarily always provided by Mother Nature. When it comes to plants growing in their native habitats, they grow in forests, and forests drop their leaves and they self-mulch, so they're a self-sustaining ecosystem. If you're like most of us gardeners and you're either growing in garden beds, in containers, or as edible landscaping, those aren't self-sustaining environments in most cases. They don't self-mulch effectively. So in most cases, to have healthy plants, we have to add fertilizer. This is especially critical when we're growing in containers. So it's important that we feed the plants enough because most things that we grow are out of their native habitats in unnatural environments. Now that we've discussed what plants need and what the NPK ratio means on fertilizers, let's discuss schedule. In my first two videos, I discuss early and mid-season fertilizing. Early season, we give them a high nitrogen feed because that contributes to faster leaves and greenery growth. Whereas mid-season, we back off to a balanced NPK ratio because that supports the overall health of the plant. 
When it comes to the fruiting phase, which is what we're entering in now, we want to switch to a higher phosphorus blend of fertilizing because like I pointed out, phosphorus contributes to root and fruit growth. So when we up the amount of phosphorus that we are giving our plants, we are going to increase their potential for the development of fruits. So in order to increase the phosphorus and make our plants fruit more, let's discuss fertilizers. We are going to discuss two types of fertilizers in this video. We're going to discuss the slow release type and the soluble type, which is rapid release. Here you'll see an all-purpose, slow release, granulated, organic fertilizer. And next to it, you will see bone meal, which is a 100% organic source of phosphorus. When it comes to the slow release granulated organic fertilizer, I recommend roughly a 5-5-5 blend. So that would be 5% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus, and 5% potassium. Here you will see that my ratio is 3-4-2, and that is not 5-5-5. However, as long as they are low numbers that are relatively close together, they will be fine for your purposes. If you can't find a perfect 555, you can use a 444, a 342, a 456. As long as the numbers are low and close to each other, you will be fine. Just don't go out and buy something like a 9040 or a 51020 or something with huge gaps in the numbers. And the purpose of your slow release organic fertilizers are to feed your soil microbiome. When you apply a slow release organic fertilizer, they they do not immediately feed your plants. They are raw materials packed full of nutrients made from organic sources. So they require the native soil bacteria and native fungi and little tiny worms and creepy crawlies in the soil to consume this granulated fertilizer and excrete it back out. And that is what your plants will uptake. So this takes a little while to kick in. You're actually feeding your microbiome. You're not feeding the plant directly with a slow release organic fertilizer. Then when it comes to bone meal, which is an organic source source of phosphorus, this is ground up animal bones. So it's very rich in phosphorus and calcium. But again, it is not immediately bioavailable. It is something that has to be consumed by the microbiome in the soil and excreted back out for your plants to use. So these will not kick in immediately. These will slowly feed your trees over time. Soluble fertilizers are fertilizers that do not need to be broken down by the native soil microbiome in order for your plants to use them. In the case of all three of these fertilizers, all you have to do is mix them in water until they dissolve and water your plants with them, and the nutrients inside will be instantly bioavailable for your plants to use. So there's no waiting game when it comes to using soluble fertilizers. These will begin to instantly feed your plants, and as such, they are very powerful. In the case of the fish fertilizer to the right, that has been made bioavailable through a process of fermentation. It is fermented, so it has already been broken down by a natural process. In the case of the Epsom salt and the miracle Grow fertilizers, they have been broken down by human laboratories. Some people are afraid to use Epsom salt and miracle Grow on their plants because they believe that they are chemical fertilizers. And while they have been broken down to their chemical form, they're still naturally derived. On the package, you can clearly see what the ingredients were into making the soluble fertilizers. I have no issues using fertilizers like this on my plants because they are still natural products. Whether or not you need to use soluble fertilizers is a completely different question. When it comes to growing figs in containers, soluble fertilizers are absolutely 100% necessary to use if you want to have the best production, health, and vigor possible. Plants were not designed to grow in containers, and as such, trying to grow them 100% organically will lead to subpar results. Containers have a negative effect on plants because they restrict the root growth, and because containers are so small, they lack a diverse native microbiome. Not only is the microbiome in containers inadequate, every single time you overwater your containers or you get a lot of rain, the containers wash out. So they are constantly being depleted of nutrients. So if all you use to fertilize your plants are slow-release organic fertilizers, the microbiome just isn't there to feed your plants enough of what they need for them to grow healthfully 
slowly and vigorously. That is where soluble fertilizers are very helpful. Because they are instantly bioavailable, they will feed your plants quickly and they will help make up for the negative environments that containers create. So it's very important that you use strong fertilizers like this, especially with figs because they grow so vigorously. Now when it comes to in-ground fig trees, whether you need to use soluble strong fertilizers like these are really your call. If the fig tree is small and is only a few years old and hasn't completely established itself, it's probably a good idea to use soluble fertilizers to give them a boost in the beginning of the season when they're first trying to wake up from dormancy and when they are moving into the fruiting phase. However, if you have a large established fig tree that has been in the ground for 10, 20 years and has miles of root development, you probably don't need to use these and you can simply stick to the organic fertilizers and use things like composting and mulching to keep your soil healthy. For those of us with young in-ground fig trees or who are growing fig trees in containers, this miracle Grow Bloom Booster is the secret to really getting great fig production. It is very strong and it is very high in phosphorus. You'll see it is 15% nitrogen, 30% phosphorus, and 15% potassium and it's that 30 percent phosphorus that is really going to trigger the intense fruiting of the fig tree when it comes to the application strength of the soluble miracle grow fertilizer i strongly recommend that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations which specifically states for outdoor plants to mix one and a half tablespoons of the soluble feed with one and a half gallons of water so that is a concentration of one tablespoon per gallon and that is the exact concentration that I am going to use to feed my fig trees. For in-ground fig trees, when it comes to concentrations of the slow-release fertilizers, I suggest that you follow the recommendations on the packages. When it comes to concentrations of the slow-release organic fertilizers, they generally do not burn fig trees, so you can be a little bit more relaxed when it comes to the application. However, the manufacturer's recommendation is to provide two cups per 25 square feet. So that's roughly one good size fig tree. And there is also instructions on the bone meal as well for in-ground applications. When it comes to how often to apply your slow release organic fertilizers to your in-ground fig trees, I suggest applying them in early spring when the fig trees first break dormancy to give them a boost to wake up. I suggest applying again when the first few figlets form because the tree will start demanding a lot of energy for the fruiting process. And I suggest applying them again when the figs first start to ripen because that again will demand a lot of energy in order to ripen the fruits. After that, I suggest backing off on the application of slow release fertilizers that way your figs can appropriately enter dormancy in the late fall and the winter. When applying fertilizers to container trees, you want to apply them every 10 to 14 days. Trees use up their nutrients quickly in containers because they're so restrictive and the containers wash out every time it rains or you overwater, so they're constantly being depleted. Because of that, it's important that we constantly feed our trees in containers to make sure there's always some nutrition in there for our trees. For our container trees, when it comes to the application of the slow release fertilizer, I'm going to use one of these green scoopers that come in with a package of miracle Grow, and the big part right here is one and a half tablespoons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of my containers two tablespoons of the slow release fertilizer, which will be roughly one rounded scoop of this, and then I'm going to give them one tablespoon of the bone meal. So again, a rounded scooper is about two tablespoons, so I'm going to split the bone meal evenly between the two containers. So again, we're going to begin with one rounded scooper, which is two tablespoons of the slow release organic for each container. That's, that's about two tablespoons total. And then one rounded scooper of the bone meal that will be split evenly between both containers. So that'll be one tablespoon total of the bone meal. And then after it has been placed, I'm going to gently work it in to the top layer of the soil, just lightly scratch it in with my fingertips. And it is important that you place the slow release fertilizer first before you place any kind of liquid because after you apply the slow release fertilizer, you are going to have to water it in because it is the water that initiates the breakdown of the slow release fertilizer. 
Now that we've applied our slow release fertilizers to all of our containers, I'm going to show you how to mix the soluble fertilizers. In front of me, I have four five gallon buckets. And as I mentioned before, we are going to feed our plants the Miracle Grow Bloom Booster in a concentration of one tablespoon per gallon. So each are going to get five tablespoons of Miracle Grow. Then we are going to apply the Epsom salt, and Epsom salt is only to prevent a magnesium and sulfur deficiency, so we're not going to have to add a whole lot. I'm going to use one rounded scooper, which is going to be approximately two tablespoons of Epsom salt. And then finally, we are going to give a healthy glug of fish emulsion to all of our buckets. And if I had to guess, this is probably around a quarter to a third of a cup or so. You can just eyeball it. You just want to get the trace micronutrients in there. Fish emulsion is not a very strong fertilizer, but it is an excellent source of all-purpose micronutrients, so it's like a multivitamin for your trees. Then after all of the fertilizers have been applied, we are simply going to add water. And now that all the fertilizer is mixed together, I'm going to apply it to my trees. Each bucket will water about six to eight trees, so that means all of my trees will get around two-thirds of a gallon or so of feed. And now all my fig trees have been fertilized with the high phosphorus feed. I will stick to this feeding schedule for another two or three feedings. It takes approximately 90 days for a fig to ripen once the initial figlet forms. And for me in my climate, my last 80 degree day is in the beginning of October. Figs ripen best in 80 degree temperatures. So for me, any fig that forms after the 4th of July holiday probably won't ripen properly in my climate because I will run out of heat by the end of the year. So there's no point in trying to form any kind of figlets for me after July 4th because they won't ripen properly for me. After I'm done feeding with the high phosphorus feeding, I will scale back to the balanced NPK approach that I outlined in my second fig fertilizing video, how to fertilize your figs mid-season. If you have a shorter growing season than I do and you run out of heat even before I do, you can use tricks like pinching figs paired with high phosphorus fertilizer to get your fig trees to fruit even more rapidly and readily. And I will be sure to link to my in-depth fig pinching video above so you can see exactly what I mean by pinching figs and how that can help speed up your growing season. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.